More than 100 years ago, Gottlieb Daimler, who was the inventor of the automobile, predicted that the worldwide demand for automobiles will not exceed one million, particularly due to a lack of drivers. Well, Gottlieb Daimler indeed was a very smart and visionary guy, but he was not visionary enough to think about the future with cars driving around without any drivers. So today, I want to talk about the future of mobility, and especially about the future with driverless cars, or autonomous vehicles, as they are called, more technically. I want to take you into that future around the year 2040, and I want to discuss with you how the world might have changed with, let's assume, 50% of all cars driving around fully autonomously. Well, a lot of experts would argue this is very over-optimistic or even impossible, but I don't care today. I still want to think, what if? So please join me, let's go to the future. Let's go to the year 2040. It took a while before autonomous vehicles got commercially available. After decades of cars driving around exclusively with the help of drivers, car manufacturers in the 2000s and 2010s increasingly put electronic gadgets into their cars, which they called advanced driver assistant systems. So these systems supported the driver in accelerating, in holding speed, in braking, in parking huge cars into tiny, tiny parking lots, um, or also to ensure that the car keeps on the right track in case, for example, the driver decided to take an unplanned nap while he was driving, so in case of an emergency. These advanced driver assistance systems were then able for partly autonomous vehicles, so cars that were already able to drive on their own but still needed a driver behind the steering wheel in case of an emergency. And then after a while, those, um, sen the sensor technology required for those cars got more and more reliable and also less expensive, and then we got more and more cars driving around really fully autonomously, meaning without any surveillance of a person behind the steering wheel. By the way, I don't want to talk about the technology behind those cars, since I'm, I'm not the right expert for that. But I can tell you, Driving fully autonomously is no science fiction. Uh, for example, in the year 2012, um, there were already uh, autonomous vehicles that got a license to drive on public roads in three states in the US. So technology is not really an issue, but sensor technology was quite expensive and that prohibited an early commercial success. Now, in the future scenario I'm talking about today, we have 50% of cars driving around fully autonomously. This is, as I would say, really a revolution of the mobility system. So I want to talk now about the main impacts of those cars on the mobility system. And first, I want to talk about some groups which would profit most. First, there are the kids and teenagers. So in 2040, kids and teenagers still have to go to school unfortunately, for the kids. But for the parents, it's much more convenient if they don't have to take their kids to school in their own car, but still give them the convenience and also the safety of taking their own car, although they don't have a driving license. Next group are the elderly. So the older generation can still continue to live their suburban dream, even when the doctors have revoked their driving licenses. So the aging baby boomers born in the 1960s, who will be um, around 80 in the year 1940, those people will be able to live a much more independent and flexible life and don't have to rely on their children or grandchildren to, to drive them around. This is, of course, the same for the handicapped people. They will be also able to live a more independent and flexible life. And the last group I want to talk is a group which I call the super commuters. So those people who don't mind driving around for 90 minutes or even longer each way, when they can turn their car into a true mobile office. So bringing their mobile devices will allow them to bring work everywhere they want, from the home to the car and then to the office without any disruption of electronic services. So this is fantastic for all the workaholics around the world. Um, by the way, not driving while they're doing all their phoning, texting, mailing, surfing and working also helps them to avoid crashes and helps them to pay um, fees from stiffer driving penalties. 
So in response to these markets, auto manufacturers began radically changing vehicle designs. So let's take the supercommuters again as an example. In 2040, the supercommuters can buy cars that don't need a steering wheel anymore, but those cars come equipped with a mahogany desk inside, with super fast internet access, with telepresence connection systems, and with lots and lots of um, high definition screens inside the car where they can plug in all their personal mobile devices. Also, cars for the older generation look different now. Those cars have a low floor entry, medical emergency buttons, and also some basic bioscan features so that telenurses can continue to get the medical feeds they want to monitor when those older people are still driving around on the roads on their own. Autonomous vehicles also support new transportation systems. Um, for example, car sharing got a huge bump. So there is a question to you. Who of you has already used car sharing? Okay, just think how convenient it would be if the shared car comes to you when you need it, and it's not you who has to go and find the shared car. Autonomous vehicles are um, increasingly combined with ride sharing. So people living in urban areas, also in rural areas, can share an autonomous vehicle independent from their destination. And the good thing is they don't have to pay a redundant driver. So taking such an autonomous shared vehicle um, will be less expensive than taking a conventional taxi. Now, what are the main impacts of that technology on the mobility environment? First, I want to talk about some positive effects. Emissions are reduced, and not only because these cars um, might drive on electricity or with alternative fuels or with hybrid engines. More importantly, these cars are programmed to drive more efficiently than a human driver could. Autonomous vehicles can and do crash due to malfunctions of the system or due to hacking. But overall, um, Roads are much safer with a larger share of autonomous vehicles driving around because of all those um, crash warning systems and that help to avoid crashes. And also drunk driving, for example, is reduced dramatically. <laughs> autonomous vehicles also help to reduce parking scarcity. So just think about when you go uh, to have dinner in a restaurant. So you take your autonomous vehicle, it brings you to the restaurant, you go to the restaurant and the car parks itself somewhere far away, but where space is not so scarce, and maybe it's also cheaper. And then after dinner, you just whistle back your car, it picks you up and brings you back home. So the car would somehow serve as your personal kit from the TV series Knight Rider. Pretty cool, don't you think? <laughs> well, those are some examples for positive effects of that technology, but I also want to talk about the reverse side of the metal, since there are also some negative effects. So as I've said before, we can expect that the average commute length will get longer because people don't mind anymore sitting in the car for longer distances or for longer time when they can do something different while driving. Also, the number of cars is increased. For example, the affluent families, they not only um, have a car for the mother and the father, but also one or more cars for the children. And also the older people, they continue to drive longer when they get older because it's easier for them to be driven around by the car. So all in all, um, passenger kilometers traveled will increase, and this means there will be more congestion issues, there will be longer rush hour. So this is something we should not forget when we talk about and discuss that new technology. So all in all, we've seen that there are lots of advantages in relation to autonomous vehicles. There are also some disadvantages which we should not forget, Remaining challenges include the security of communication networks, which leaves us vulnerable to accidental disruptions or to hacking. But all in all, as I said, technology is not really an issue. And although we can expect that those autonomous vehicles will be more expensive than conventional cars in the same class, a lot of experts really believe in a high future market success of those vehicles. But let me finish this presentation with a question to all of you. If those fully autonomous vehicles would be commercially available soon, would you personally accept to be driven around by a car that is fully controlled by a computer? So that's the big question most car manufacturers are looking for an answer right now. Thank you. <laughs>